This ain't going to be a minute long, and it probably ain't going to be a happy one. So, um, Alison Brie is Evil Lynn, or will be Evil Lynn, for Amazon's He-Man movie. Now, uh, the idea of you... Uh, so, I remember Alison Brie from Community. Uh, she did some sitcoms, lighthearted stuff, funny, dark humor, but mostly funny stuff. There she is. She's not Sarah Douglas. I like Sarah Douglas. Sarah Douglas was a great villain in, um, what is it, Conan the Destroyer, right? Remember that? Oh, that was good times. Good times. But that was a couple of generations ago. So let's look at the article. Alison Brie has nabbed the key, uh, key villain role of Evil Lynn for Amazon, Amazon's MGM Studios and Mattel Films live-action take on Masters of the Universe. The actress currently seen on Peacock's thriller limited series Alp Apples Never Fail from Nicholas uh, joins Nicholas Galatine and Camilla Mendez. Uh, so, leads the actress as He-Man. While Mendez is on the call sheet for the role of Tila, the captain of the Royal Guard and possible romantic interest, in the director's chair, the feature has sitting Travis Knight, the founder of stop-motion powerhouse Leica, uh, who helmed the company's Cabo and the Two Strings Masters of the Universe has been in development for around, around two decades, but now finally seems to be approaching a start of production. Plot de be uh, the plot details are being kept in the box, but the concept centers on the character of Prince Adam of Eternia, who, thanks to the power sword, turns into the muscular He-Man and is imbued with superhuman strength and abilities. With his assortment of allies, he defends the planet from evil Skeletor and his armies. An evil end is Skeletor's second-in-command and uses a wand with a crystal orb to practice the dark arts. Meg Foster portrayed the character first in 87. Screen, screenplay is by Chris Butler. Uh, David Callahan uh, first wrote it, and then Aaron and Adam Nee uh, wrote another draft. Escape Artists and Mattel Films are producing the feature that is going to come out June 5th, 2026. So, casting is a big budget IP fantasy. This is, I mean, the thing is, so Alison Brie, um, she recently starred in somebody that I used to know and executive co-produced, -pro executive produced with husband Dave Franco. Okay. So a couple of things. I mean, we got, we got Alison Brie. So here, here is the lineup. Okay. We got Alison Brie. We have the Camilla of Mendez as Tila and Nicholas Galatine as most muscular as He-Man Prince Adam, I guess. Um, kind of doubtful on this, but let me talk about what we're looking at here for the next two years of anticipation. This is a theatrical movie, and it has to be for this live action to work, uh, for children to be involved in watching this, okay? Um, I just saw the Minecraft trailer, not excited for it. Maybe I'll make a short making fun of it. I don't know. Um... But it has to work as a theatrical release or it'll fail like the other things. Now, Netflix does not want to do any more He-Man stuff uh, after the cartoons, both cartoons, and I think She-Ra, Princesses of Power. Uh, they're just done with it. Uh, Kevin Smith failed He-Man and a lot of other people too. Okay. And... The one time that they did have an opportunity. Now, somebody said on Clown, one of Clownfish's uh, podcasts that the key to really selling toys was that the kids had to start buying the toys. And you couldn't do that if you had Netflix's He-Man. It had to be on television or someplace where it's easily available and accessible. And since there was no place to put He-Man on network television, um... Or even easy, I mean, wherever parents get their kids, cable or some other thing, some way for them to watch He-Man right away, instantaneously. And if they're not watching it on TV, they may not be watching it online. Parents have, some parents have, a lot of parents, white parents usually I think of, <laughs> but they usually have parental controls, what their kids are allowed to watch or not allowed to watch, or at least Maybe not, if not so much for the content, for the discipline of doing their homework first. So uh, kids don't get to watch this stuff as easily as what, like if, if let's focus on the last version of He-Man that was meant for children, right? So 
this cartoon that got canceled after, what, 40 episodes? And I had the DVDs. And that's a shame. It really was. This was, uh, these are universal characters in that, well, besides Universal NBC having like uh, access to the old cartoons. These characters are cartoon, they're cartoon characters. They're not uh, a particular likeness of an actor or a singer or whoever's portraying them. These are cartoon characters that you can easily see and they're easy to draw, too, if you have enough patience. I have enough patience. I've drawn them before. And kids could get into them. The problem was, was that the way that this was promoted, it was never going to work. So you have this issue with He-Man uh, being accessible to everyone. So because the toys were canceled, so what happened with this happened with 2002 He-Man all over again. The cartoons got canceled and the toys got canceled. And any comic books that was going to happen got canceled. If there were any, there was like, like one or two comic books that tied into this. And after that, that was it. Nothing else. So that was, that was the, uh, the, 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 the short saga of two of CGI He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Revelation got a sequel in Revolution and that was it. And there would be nothing else. No video games. Uh, the comic books were limited to some aspect of revelation or revolution of masters of the universe. And that's all dark horse would have, uh, it's, it's say uh, what happens in the further adventures, but most of my collecting is done. Now we're expected to take on these characters. Now I've, I've shown, uh, Paul Gerard's art of masters of the universe. Paul Gerard tells a Zack Snyder, Gothic, heavy metal, death metal, um, Conan the Barbarian, more adult story of Masters of the Universe with uh, He-Man and Skeletor. Uh, what is the what is what are these characters are what are these characters doing? Do they make a pact with the devil? Is there murder? Is there blood? Is there grotesque uh, de-skinning of characters, or uh, do characters? you know, grossly transform into other things, you know, or, you know, is Triclops a robot that literally like makes surgical implants into humans in bloody ways that only adults would appreciate. And I think a lot of, to be fair, I make fun of my own peers. Okay. I'm in my forties. A lot of people want to be man children or women children, and they want to literally go back to those days. You can't, I mean, you can go, you can go and collect vintage figures, but you can't literally go back. Mattel doesn't know what the, they don't know what they're doing now. Even if and I'm saying this now because if I'm at the uh, eight minute mark here. OK, of people who think they know what I'm talking about. Even if Camilla Mendez, Nicholas Galatine and Alison Brie convince you that they are He-Man, Tila and Evil Lynn. Is this movie for kids? And if it is for kids, are the toy? There have to be fucking toys. There have to be another wave of toys. And are those wave of toys going to be limited because of the actor's likenesses? Is it going to be limited to, to uh, is something going to come out of this? Because if you're strictly sticking to the actor's likenesses, then the run will be very limited to like maybe a year or two with licensing because a person's face is, is private domain as far as I'm concerned. There hasn't been established private domain in law yet. But you have public domain, you have a private domain, and then you have IP. So it's private domain plus intellectual property. And that private domain has a shorter lifespan than, than uh, intellectual property. As I was looking at some Batman 66 figures. You'll have Adam West's Batman in some. In other characters, you won't have the exact likeness. It'll be a little strange. But you have all the characters of Batman 66, even if you don't have all the actors like... Uh, the either the actor's approval or the estate approval of the actor who passed away or is incapable of answering. So how, what, what's the, what's the shelf life of these actors likeness action figures going to be? And if you can get around the likenesses long after their approvals, then you have the world of that particular masters of the universe that has to hold on to something. So it's a big old fucking gamble. And Based on this, I mean, we go back to this. This had such great potential, okay? 
Um, I'm looking at the Eldris, but we'll we'll look together at these great pieces of art. Look at that's that's Eldris, right? What a great, you know, thick sorceress. Orko the Great. Um before you yeah, had the robot Orko. This is the problem that you throw away these great things because you have a quote unquote better idea. But do you have a better idea? There's Stratos. You know, it has I won't say woke, but I will say progressive, politically correct He-Man today, okay? And that is fine, because this worked fine. The only problem I told you I had with this was that it was moving too damn fast. And they, and Rob and the other showrunners, they needed to, Rob, David, the other guy, they needed to slow down. Just slow down a bit so the adults can catch up to the storytelling, okay? This is the, um, I believe this is the, uh, the talent fighter. This is the, the new talent fighter. We were discovering He-Man all over again because we know the stories. But they try to reinvent it slightly, give Lady Slither a new background, new, a new origin story, give other characters new origin stories, but be a bit confusing like the prime timeline is in Star Trek. Um, I just, I wanted to see more of this. And I'm disappointed that we're not going to get that. We're going to, oh no, 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 it's fine. Nicholas Galatine, Akila Mendez, Alison Brie, uh, this guy from this show who did this cable show, he's going to play Matt at Arms uh, from this uh, subscription series. He's going to play Matt at Arms. Maybe we'll get somebody from Westworld to play, uh, I don't know, uh, Clam Champ or Fisto. I don't know. Like, they're going to get different actors. But I just I just don't care now. I just don't care now. Now, I may go, I'm going to probably go see this if it's in theaters, okay? I'll go see it. I'll give you a proper review. But I'm not that optimistic about this. All I've been doing right now is just buying old Mattel products. Now, 2026 may be the year that I go back on my word, or at least at a halfway point in which I'm willing to invest in the Masters of the Universe toys that are based on the movie. But if this movie does not make this one look like shit, or revolution look like shit or revelation, then this was all a waste of time. If this doesn't really put princesses of power in its place, then this was a waste of fucking time. I have nothing against the actors. I think they'll do a great job. But based on Alice, what Alison Brie has done, based on the stuff that Camilla Mendez has done and Nicholas has done, I don't see this being like a dark adult movie. This is a kid's movie for PG to PG-13, maybe PG-13. They might as well try to meet halfway and try to do PG-13. If they try to do PG, it's probably going to get lost upon people. This will be another Concord, live-action Concord, right? I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm very, I'm very concerned about it. So that is my concern. That is my rant. And I'm going to move on to better things than He-Man in 2026.